From Bell to Sebastian, Disney nerds like a lot of things, but there's something they love above all else, and that is correcting people. This is Um Actually. Joining us, we have Danny Fernandez. I should say bonjour, bonjour, <laughs> bonjour, bonjour, bonjour. Bonjour. Uh, we have Oscar Montoya. Hey, Peter Pan is problematic. <laughs> <laughs> it sure is. And we have Joan Ford. Hi, um, I was wondering, does this uh, show give a prize for rotten judgment? Because <laughs> <laughs> you've already won that? Yeah, I've already, I'm oh. just bragging. I've already won that. <laughs> <laughs> so we're already in it with the references, which means we are in the right headspace here. Very excited to have you all on. Very excited to talk about this, uh, which is, uh, we we're talking about this a little bit before the episode, but is, is maybe the area that like I'm actually uh, I would probably do the best in if I were uh, if, if these positions were switched but um, got a couple of Disney fans here fair to say if you're here on this episode yeah <laughs> <laughs> incredibly accurate very accurate would be correct, also yeah. Joan and I, I have I the have same mug yeah. no I was gonna say I don't know who is a who is a bigger fan because Oscar has this permanently tattooed on his body that's true so, I do really? have quite yeah. a couple tattoo on my body and I was also going to say, Oscar, you have, uh, I think, those are all props from Cinderella in the background. Those are her brooms. <laughs> brooms, mice. Yeah. You're yes. living it. Well, uh, you've all played before. I don't need to explain the rules to you, but I will explain to you in case you're just joining us for the first time. Uh, this uh, is, um, actually, I have here a stack of statements. These are incorrect statements about Disney movies. Uh, it's up to these fine contestants here uh, to find what's wrong buzz in and correct me. Uh, all the corrections must be preceded with the phrase, um, actually, if they don't, I won't give them a point. Uh, and you can interrupt me whenever you want. As soon as you see hear what's wrong, you can jump on in there. Uh, all right, well, with that, we'll go ahead and we'll move right into our first statement here. So buzzers at the ready and uh, we'll jump in. <sighs> Since the original Lion King release in 1994, there have been an impressive number of sequels, spin-offs, and adaptations. Among them are The Lion King 2, Simba's Pride, The Lion King 1 and a Half, The Lion Guard, Around the World with Timon and Pumbaa, Kimba, The White Lion, The Lion King, Simba's My- Yes, Joan, and then uh, Danny and then Oscar. <laughs> uh, um, actually, uh, Kimba, The White Lion is not a uh, spin-off, sequel, or reimagining of The Lion King. It is the movie that some alleged uh, Disney ripped off for The Lion King. That is correct. Uh, Akimba, the White Lion, predates The Lion King and is not part of the the Lion King uh, pride. Uh, pride, <laughs> pride of films, oh. yes. Yes, yes, the pride of films. Um, but those others, yeah, a whole bunch of spinoffs and things. I didn't even get to the musicals and, uh, and of course, the 2019 remake of the same name. The thing that I'll say about The Lion King is I think it is the perfect Disney movie. It's not my oh, favorite, but I do think it's like actually beautifully written, structured. That opening sequence, mm -hmm. if you're not crying, <laughs> there's something yeah. wrong. <laughs> My favorite Disney movie is uh, The Emperor's New Groove, Ooh. but the, the perfect Disney movie is The Lion King. Interesting. For me, I have a lot of mixed feelings of how I felt for a lion that was voiced by Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Yeah, that because doesn't that have was to teen bop, teen beat, whatever, cut out all those <laughs> photos. But then to like be uh, attracted to a lion was, was, you know, but again, I, I don't know. I was like six. So <laughs> <laughs> I know this voice and I like this voice, but this isn't the shape. I think this voice should be. <laughs> uh, well, great. Well, that point will go to Joan for identifying uh, the lion that does not fit in here. And we'll move on to our next question. In The Rescuers Down Under, the first animated theatrical sequel Disney released, Miss Bianca and Bernard are both field agents for the Rescue Aid Society. They team up with Orville the Albatross and Jake the Hopping Mouse to, uh, yes, Joan. Uh, um, actually, I believe, believe they team up with his brother, Wilbur. <laughs> that is correct. Wow! <laughs> because, well, I said, uh, the voice actor who played Orville uh, had passed away at that point, and they got John Candy oh, to replace the, uh, pro to play his brother, Wilbur. That is all 100% correct. <laughs> uh, I, 
Uh, I do not remember the in canon reason that will that I don't think they are like John Candy's like my brother's dead. I can't remember. <laughs> He's just like on vacation or something. And really bring down everyone in the movie. It's like <laughs> I know you're trying to find a kid. <laughs> just so you know what I've been going through lately. <laughs> Yo, that scene with the shot, the needle, like all the mice that are pulling back yeah. like to get the shot in the butt terrified me. Uh. Cause they're also because like he's kind of like he's like restrained, right? He's like tied down, and it's like here we're coming. We're all gonna swarm <laughs> over you and stick you with needles. It's like Jesus Christ, don't do that. I also, I guess I'll say this too, because there was some debate when we were uh, researching. I, I also, if someone had said it, would have accepted uh, the Three Caballeros as being the first animated uh, a Disney movie. Ooh. The the it's a bit of a tricky one because it's not fully animated. It's a mix of animation and live action. But you could maybe claim it's a sequel to Saludos Amigos. Um, uh, so if someone had said that, I would have given you the point. But uh, and I'm just saying it now for any any people nitpicking in the comments. We did consider it, uh, and we have found the arguments enticing but questionable. Uh, Joan, run away here. We have plenty more questions left. People often think of Disney movies being appropriate for all ages, but after Atlantis The Lost Empire became the first Disney animated feature to win a PG rating, many subsequent movies have also been rated PG. Joan, coming in fast again. Um, actually, doesn't The Black Cauldron have a PG rating? Yes, Joan, The Black Cauldron does have a PG rating. What the? <laughs> I, I, but uh, it, it just it hit one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, once again, I didn't even finish the question. I'm just, uh, just like angrily log off. It's just like <laughs> black screen. <laughs> I'm just, uh, I literally will just walk out, put a cardboard cut out of myself. <laughs> the exact, I'll be playing right. the exact same game. What a rush. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's right. Um, uh, Black Cauldron, uh, not as well known, not as beloved as some others, but was the first uh, Disney movie to get a PG rating. And and otherwise, that is true. After Atlantis, uh, there were there were like many more mm -hmm. uh um, uh, some that I, were on the question, if I had gotten that far, uh, include Lilo and Stitch, Treasure Planet, Zootopia, Wreck-It Ralph, Frozen, Moana, um, uh, all PG. Um, but before that, fairly rare, just the Black Cauldron. <laughs> but you pulled it out of history and plopped it here for that answer. That's like the right, bastard yeah. child of the Disney movies, right? It's like yeah. the one that no one talks about. Yeah, I actually remember when they um, when they re-released it from the Disney Vault, which is always my favorite <laughs> phrase because it it, it doesn't well, re-release. It escaped from the Disney Vault. Yeah, true. <laughs> it got out. Someone hunt down the black hole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, I always have this image of like like someone like with a candle like stepping down like a million stairs to like <laughs> crank open the vault to be like this is the one. Um, I always just imagine somebody in a corporate chair just like hmm, our sales on Bambi are a little low. <laughs> <laughs> to the I'm vault. Just, to the vault. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, uh, you know, like I grew up with like just a ton of Disney movies, and when that uh, when they re-released it. I remember it, it felt like like finding like a lost gospel or something where it's like, I've never even heard of this. Like, what is this? And I, I bought it on the spot. And the level of between like my excitement and my disappointment with that movie <laughs> it, it was like, it's like, oh, this is Disney. This is high fantasy. This is like everything I love. And then really watching, it's like, OK, I can I maybe see why this had to, had yeah. to escape out. Disney Vault. <laughs> uh, well, we'll, uh, we'll go on to our next one here. Um, uh, this next is a fan-submitted question. This comes to us from one of our viewers, uh, a Disney question from Shinny Tenshi. Thank you, Shinny Tenshi, for your submission. Disney songs are iconic, but only a select few go on to win an Oscar for Best Original Song. These include When You Wish Upon a Star from Pinocchio, Part of Your World from The Little Mermaid, Can You Feel the Love Tonight from The Lion King, and Let It Go from Frozen. For once, uh, Joan wasn't uh, wasn't uh, hot. <laughs> yeah. I feel like she knows it. She's just taking mercy. Yeah, she... <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, part of your world didn't win for best original song. That's correct, actually. Yes. There was a song from The Little Mermaid that did win best original song, but it wasn't part that of is your world. Under the sea. It is under the sea. Yes, yes. under the sea is uh, a <laughs> song from The Little Mermaid. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, that finally. point will go down. <laughs> A fair choice of, of best song from Little Mermaid. Uh, do you have a, 
uh, if you were to choose between part of your world or uh, under the sea, would you would you go with that choice, I guess? No, I would go with part of your world. It's just, it starts out like, there's so many depths to it as someone that listens to it frequently on my Spotify. It's just <laughs> like, as a grown woman that still listens to it almost every day, where she's like, I'm really curious about this. And she's like, where's my turn? I deserve this. I should get this. And then at the end, she's very sad because she realizes like, I guess I won't have it. Like there's so many levels that Jody Benson did in that listen to it again of like the emotion of going from like angry and sassy to like demanding to like disheartened and and yeah it's gorgeous i love it part of your world is like the best and maybe my favorite want song period in like musicals it's so good and i don't know uh in a in a canon of like you know very like queer coded songs. I feel like that's my favorite. That's my favorite and the most queer coded. <laughs> All right. Well, that point goes to Danny and we'll move on to our uh, next question, which is our first shiny question of the game. This is a game uh, called What's Wrong With This Picture? So in just a second, we're going to show you an image, something from Disney, uh, and uh, we have altered it in some way. So it'll be up to you to find what's wrong with the image, buzz in and tell me. First person who can identify what's wrong will get the point. So yes. Take a look at that image. What is wrong with this picture? Danny's counting dwarves. <laughs> <laughs> All those dwarves look pretty uh, correct. Oscar has buzzed. Okay, in. Uh, this is just a guess, but whatever. Yeah. Um, actually, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs is spelled with an F S, not a V E S. Oscar, that's a hundred percent correct. Wow. Uh, let, let's take a look at what it should look like there. That's that's what it should be. Um, yeah, it's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And in fact, dwarfs was the preferred pluralization of dwarf until Tolkien uh, uh, popularized dwarves as the more popular uh, spelling. So even though it's more, you're more co likely to hear dwarves now, uh, at the time when this came out, dwarfs was the preferred. And so it is Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Um, that point goes to Oscar. <laughs> He's getting one. a point for having bad grammar. Like. Yeah. <laughs> or proper 1930s grammar. Yeah, yeah. Wait, I have a mug just for this. Okay. <laughs> one point for Danny, one point for Oscar, three for Joan. Pretty fast answers and no, no non-answers so far. This is great. Uh, I'm loving this. We'll move on to our next question here. Fans of The Little Mermaid will be familiar with Ariel's animal friends, Flounder the Flounder, Scuttle the Seagull, and Sebastian the Crab. But they may not know that Sebastian was originally imagined as a posh lobster butler named Clarence. The character was changed on the suggestion of lyricist Howard Ashman. Joan. This is, uh, this is a guess, but um, um, actually, Alan Menken is the lyricist? Uh, incorrect, no. Okay. Um, this is a dumb guess. Um, actually, flounder isn't a flounder. That's not a dumb guess. That's correct, Danny. Yes! <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's never really addressed, like, what kind of fish flounder is, and it's not, um, it's, it isn't totally named, but, uh, but if you see a picture of a flounder, you can say with absolute certainty, flounder is not a flounder. Flounders are, like, very flat, right? If flounder is a flounder, this is the biggest glow up ever. Like, I need to know who yeah, was responsible. Seriously, that, that fish got work done. Yeah. yeah. The rest of that is true, though. Uh, uh, Sebastian was originally supposed to be a posh uh, lobster butler named Clarence uh, before he was reimagined. Uh, Saltzman, do you have a... Uh, yeah, I just want to say, uh, jo while it's not a correction, um, uh, Alan Menken did also write the, the lyrics and music for Little Mermaid, so that, that wasn't incorrect. It's just it wasn't a fix, that's all. But I did want to throw that out there. Menken was very... He was really hardcore about it being a posh lobster butler. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I will walk off this set so, if we make that, <laughs> that lobster a crab. Are you yeah. kidding me? Uh, well, great. Uh, point, uh, point for Danny there. Here's our next statement. If you're a Disney villain, you should probably be afraid of heights. Falling is a good way to kill a character without showing any gory details, and dozens of Disney villains have met their demise this way, including the Queen in Snow White, Radigan, Gaston, Scar, and Percival McLeach. Oscar has buzzed in. Um, actually, Percival did not die falling off a cliff. 
He does die falling from a great height if he falls off a waterfall. Joan has buzzed in. Um, actually, Scar doesn't die from the fall. He dies from getting ripped apart by the height. You're right. That is right. correct. Right. Both Scar right. does fall from a great height. Wow. It doesn't kill him. What kills yeah. him are the hyenas. <laughs> uh, wow. Yeah, you caught that. A uh, good job. This, is, this should almost be like a like an incredible style like no capes rule for for Disney villains like just stay away from tall <laughs> places you're you're fine. <laughs> they can only fight on the ground floor. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's the opposite. Uh, yeah, it's the opposite of Star Wars. On Star Wars, you want the high ground. Disney yeah. villains want the low ground. Are there any um, like villain deaths that have like stuck in your memory since like seeing them as a kid? Honestly, like uh, Clayton in Tarzan, mm -hmm. uh, like yep. he like, and I saw that like when I was like probably a teen, but still, it was like to see someone like get their neck snapped in a Disney movie, even though it's like you don't see the actual neck snap. That was pretty dark. I agree with that. that. I think that is one of the darker ones because like that is also a falling from a great height. They could have just like let him fall and be like, he's probably yeah. dead. But you see that silhouette of like, it's like, yeah. oh God, that's a, that's a bit more. I mean, we want to talk about gruesome deaths. Ursula died in the, she was impaled by a freaking yeah. ship. Yeah, and you get that like full like skeleton view oh. for a while, or just like giant, <laughs> just like. Uh, well, great. Well, that uh, that will go to Joan again, Joan for identifying the very specific way which Scar dies, and we will move on to our next statement here. True to its name, characters in the Disney Princess line have all appeared in Disney Pixar animated features and are part of a ruling family by birth, marriage, or both. But not every princess in a Disney movie is part of the official Disney Princess line. The 12 characters in the group currently consist of Snow White, Cinderella, Aurora, Ariel, Belle, Jasmine, Pocahontas, Mulan, Tiana, Rapunzel, Merida, and Moana. Danny. Merida is not in it. Is not. Uh, um, actually, sorry. Um, actually, Merida is not. In uh, the... Merida is part of the the Disney Princess line. I have to put it in quotes because it's like the official Disney. Oh, she unless is you have not. A... No, no, no. I was gonna say she's not in a lot of the merch cover though. You... Ooh. <laughs> I'm telling you, when you have like the Disney Princess like p bath towels or whatever, yeah. she's, she's not on them. But anyway, uh, Oscar, you buzzed in. I did, and I didn't mean to, but... Um... Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't have to answer. I, I'm not going to force I th you. I think I'll answer. I think I'll answer. Uh, um, actually, here's the thing. Yeah. Mulan isn't technically a princess, but she's in the princess line. Um, actually, Mulan is not a princess. <laughs> That is good. That's what we're going for here. Yeah. Uh, so I said that all of these characters are um, a part part of a ruling family by birth, marriage, or both. Oh, okay. um, Mulan, though uh, though she is a high ranking military official and is also married to a high ranking military official, is not technically part of any royal family uh, and is the only <laughs> Disney princess who is not a however you want to find princess uh, princess. Um, so that point will go to you, Oscar, for that. Although um, I will say Mulan yeah. is in all of the merch, Oscar. Yeah. So I do want to say. No. Listen, <laughs> I, I love Mulan being there. You know what I mean? But I think that speaks in a larger picture, more Asian royal representation in mm -hmm. Disney films. So. 100%. All right. Narrowing the gap here. Two, two, four. Uh, two for Danny. Two for Oscar. Four for Joan. And this will bring us to our second shiny question. This is a game called Once More Without Feeling. Uh, so <laughs> the way the way this game works is I'm going to read to you lyrics from Disney songs, but I'm going to try to put absolutely no melody <laughs> or rhythm or anything on top. Just oh, totally no. flat, just the <laughs> words. Uh, and we're going to see if you can identify. Um, I'll say the movie is close enough. If you can get the song specific song to, cool. But if you can at least identify the movie that it's from, I'll give you the point. I'm not necessarily choosing the best known line from any song, nor am I necessarily choosing the best known songs. I've tried to give it a pretty broad swath here, but that's what you're looking for. Uh, as, as with other ones, whoever can name the most will get the point for this one. Here we go, <laughs> the first one. <clears throat> it's time to see what I can do to test the limits and break through. No right, no wrong, no rules for me. I'm free. Uh, Joan, 
Let it go. I, um, actually, that's Let It Go from Frozen. That is Let It Go from Frozen. And uh, for the purposes of this one, you don't have to say I'm um, actually. You can if you want to say it in practice and not forget okay, later. Okay, but okay, just, yeah. you know, I, won't, I won't not count anyone else <laughs> if they don't say it. Um, all right. Here's our next one. Years of such selective breeding. Generations have been leading to this miracle of life that we all know. Like, those lyrics sound so familiar, yeah. but what song is it from? Joan. Uh, is that from The Emperor's New Groove? That is from The Emperor's wow. New Groove. Oh, my That's the God! the opening song. Yeah. The, the, the one song in the movie? <laughs> the one song in the movie at the very like, top. <laughs> what, which, what Disney character would they sing such a, like, pompous song about? Like, it has to be Cusco. Uh, here is our next one. I'm the king of the highway, prince of the boulevard, duke of the avant-garde. The world is my backyard. Uh, Oscar, yeah, you're, you're buzzing Is in. it the Aristocats? It is the Aristocats. Yes! Uh, yes, oh. that, is, uh, that is O'Malley the Alley Cat yes. from the Aristocats. Uh, that one goes to Oscar, and I will reset these buzzers. <laughs> All right, here's the next one. This fire in my skin, this burning desire is turning me to sin. It's not my fault. Joan, Oscar, close behind. Uh, uh, Hunchback of Notre Dame. That is, that is Heaven's Light Hellfire. 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 I went to, ca like, this is getting, per but like going to Catholic school all the time, I was like, yeah, this is how Catholicism makes you feel about getting horny. This is <laughs> such, captures a mood so perfectly. Like, it resonates. probably the horniest Disney song. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that is currently three for Joan and one for Oscar. Here is our next one. If only the world wouldn't get in your way. If only people would just let you play, they'd say you're both being fools. You're breaking all the rules. Oscar. Um, Fox and the Hound? That is the Fox and the wow, Hound. Wow, yes. good job! That oh. is the, that is the, the, the owl like, sings that, right? the one song in there, yeah, it's just the, yeah. Uh, yeah, the owl sing, and like, you don't really even see her singing, you see them playing, you kind of hear it in the background uh, as she sings, sings along about, about their, their forbidden friendship. Um, three for Joan, two for Oscar. We'll see how this last one goes. <clears throat> You wear your hair in a pompadour. You ride around in a coach and four. You stop and buy out a candy store. Ooh. <laughs> I, can, candy like, stores. I can like mm. hear it. Oh. <laughs> That's such a weird specific lyric. I know I've heard it and it's just like, it's not coming. Yeah, who, who would, would buy a candy store? A candy store. Let's, get, let's break this down. Who would I buy know, a candy yeah. store? Okay, so someone's I, wearing I a pompadour. Okay. okay. Okay, but then a candy store. The candy store is weird. Candy it's a weird thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pompadour at a candy store. Yeah, and then I like. I, do I, who would wear a pomp? Who, I'm picturing a candy store with a pompadour. Yeah, it, I'm just gonna take a guess. Is yeah. it Pocahontas? It's not Pocahontas. No. Uh, I'm trying to I, think I, of see, I can see who, where you're coming from, though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oscar. This is from The Princess and the Frog. Uh, it is not from The Princess and the Frog. No. The first thing in the game so far that no one has gotten. Should I just say, I'm just going to, whatever, I'll take like a wild guess. It's from Home on the Range. Oh my God. Interesting <laughs> guess, it. but no, it is not. It is no. not. Cow. I'm going to take another guess. Yeah, because please. I can. Is it the Great Mouse Detective? It's not. Ooh, no. Do no, you know, no. I could see Radigan yeah, maybe. Yeah. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a stab. Okay. This feels like. Gaston from Beauty and the Beast. Mm, it's not. It is not that. Uh, I'll go ahead and reveal this one. This is this will be the first uh, thing. Oh. Uh, this whole game that that no one has gotten. Uh, this is from the song uh, "High Diddle Dee Dee," an actor's life for me from Pinocchio. Oh my God! From um, yes, you ride around oh. it. Oh God! Yeah. That movie like, was such a shade for actors. I I, I just like yeah. laughed. I was like, shade, oh, no, this shade is rude. For act, shade for actors and rude little boys. Yes. <laughs> I, I guess now that we're talking about it, um, uh, uh, Pleasure Island or or whatever it was called, the scene where they're turning into donkeys, that might be one of the more horrifying Ooh, yeah. scenes okay. where they're all calling for their mother while they're like transforming into, it's almost got like a body horror thing going on of like, yeah. oh shit. <laughs> I'm going to make a really like weird film comparison, but the scene where they're turning into like do donkeys and um, lampwick 
Quick is like, I want my mommy, is like yeah. very similar scene in the human centipede where they like find out what's gonna happen. And like one of the girls <laughs> is like, I want my mommy. And I was like, oh, this, I remember seeing that movie and be like, oh, this is like, they're both like, like it's both like ass related and or like body horror. I was like, wow, I, think this, I wonder if this wow. is specific. Is this like, is this a reference? Wow. So there is some connective tissue between, between human centipede and Pinocchio. Yes. And yeah. there's a lot of human a bunch of a lot connective of tissue. tissue and I th- <laughs> Jeff, I think we were both going for the exact same joke. Uh, well, that was three identified by Joan and two by Oscar, which means Joan will get that point for that shiny question. All right, two for Oscar, two for Danny, five for Joan. And we'll move on to our next statement here. One of the best-known segments from Fantasia is The Sorcerer's Apprentice. Based on a poem by Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, the animated short tells the story of Mickey Mouse as an apprentice to a sorcerer named Balthazar. Using the sorcerers, yet Oscar and Joan so close behind. Um, actually, that's not the sorcerer's name. The sorcerer's name is Disney Backwards, which is Yen Sid. That is correct. <laughs> uh, the sorcerer's name is Yen Sid. Uh, Balthazar is the name of the sorcerer in the uh, that uh, Nicolas Cage plays Nicholas, in the live yeah. act adaptation of uh, the oh, Sorcerer's Apprentice. My which I'm sure you all remember. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that in theaters. It completely blew I, out of yeah. my head. I saw that in theaters too. <laughs> right after Human Centipede. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was a double feature. Um, great. Well, that point will go to Oscar. Uh, here's our next one. The Return of Jafar was the first directed video animated film and the second of three Aladdin animated movies. All of the voice actors from the original Aladdin signed on for both Return of Jafar and Danny. Um, actually, the original cast did not return. There's no way that uh, Robin Williams would do a direct-to-video <laughs> sequel. <laughs> uh, you're close enough that I'll give you the point for that. Uh, uh, so, um, but you're, uh, you're, you're half right, which is that almost the entire cast signed on for, for Return of Jafar, the, of the original cast. There were only two people who didn't. Um, one was uh, Douglas Seal, who was the voice of Sultan. He uh, unfortunately passed away uh, uh, after the first movie, and um, uh, Robin Williams had a contentious disagreement with uh, Disney the company because they, they believed they were using some of the sound bites for yeah. some commercials which he wasn't very fond of but they did resolve that dispute and he did come back for the third sequel uh, uh, King of King Thieves, of Thieves? So, uh, okay. so yeah so, uh, so he, technically <laughs> he would do a direct to video so technically yeah. he would do it uh, but you are right that he didn't do it for Return uh-huh. of Jafar look you can be you can be swayed by the mouse at any time so <laughs> I think he was firm in his ground and then he was like, you know what? I don't mind another beach house. So, meanwhile, yeah. uh, Gilbert Godfrey's like, I'll do anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come back for the series. I'll come back for all the movies. It's it just him and Bobcat, like yeah. both, both of their, <laughs> both of their characters. Oh uh, yeah, I would want. What is it? Uh, Iago and 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 Panic Pain or Panic? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, we will go on, move on here. This is our uh, last shiny question of the game. I, I don't really have a name for this. Uh, let's call it uh, Voice Over. I don't know. Here's the way this game is going to work. Uh, in just a second, you're going to see uh, uh, a bunch of faces. Uh, now, lots and lots of people have provided voices uh, to uh, Disney for uh, animated Disney movies. Um, you're going to see a bunch of images of people who have provided uh, their voice, uh, and one image of one person who has not provided a voice for a Disney animated feature. Uh, the first person who can identify the person who has not provided a voice will get the point for this question. Cool. Let's take a look. Look at all those folks. Lots of folks. Did I choose maybe some ones you might have forgotten about? Yes. Um, uh, uh, but only one of these people has not provided a voice. Joan. Um, actually, Maria Bamford has not provided a Disney voice. Joan, that is correct. Uh, how many of these do you think you know uh, who their characters are? Um, I think I could do a lot. I could do a lot of them. Um, really? Can I, can I try? Okay. Um, sure. Michael, Michael J. Fox and- is Milo from Atlantis, The Lost Empire. Yep. Bob Newhart, of course, Bernard. Leonard Nimoy, um, I'm going to come back to. Joey Lawrence, yep. Oliver, Martin Short, Treasure Planet, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Treasure Planet. 
uh, Ving Rhames, Atlantis, Vincent Price, Radigan, Rosie O'Donnell, Turk, Paul F. Tompkins, one of the thugs from Rapunzel. I need to come back to Leonard Nimoy and to and to Kai. Wow, uh, you're just forgetting all the Star Trek people. Jeff. I know, I know. I should be. Uh, shoot, does someone want to, who's who's a Star Trek expert? Uh, that was pretty good. I will say, Joe, you got you did get one of those wrong, but the rest uh, you did get totally right. Uh, you did misidentify um, uh, Ving Rhames. Uh, oh wait, sorry. Can I go back? Sorry, yes. Lilo and Stitch. I sorry, yes. Lilo and Stitch. Yeah. Uh, Agent Cobra Bubbles and Lilo and yeah. Stitch. Uh, so yeah, the two you didn't identify were uh, Leonard Nimoy and uh, George Takei. Is that right? Do Oscar or Danny? Do you uh, do you either of you know? No. Yeah, I have no idea. Yeah, I'm blanking right now. Go ahead and fill it in then. Uh, George Takai uh, voiced uh, first ancestor in Mulan uh, when, when, the, when the the ancestors appear. Um, and uh, Leonard Nimoy was the king of Atlantis uh, in Atlantis uh, Lost Empire. I did, I did oh. double dip in some of these like Atlantis uh, uh, just because for me, they're, they're some of the ones that I remember or didn't see or remember the least. Uh, and yeah. uh, so become the ones that are like, wait, really? That person? Um, but yeah. I did not people. see Tevin Campbell up there. So, you know. <laughs> 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 How accurate, valid <laughs> is that lineup? Look, there were there were a lot of ones that I wanted to include here that was like ah oh, uh, mm, okay uh, but um, but yeah there you have it. That point will go to Joan. Joan's pretty much locked up the win here, but it's still a race for second place. Um, and we are on our last question here, which as always concerns real life skills. Uh, oh. Nothing to do with uh, Disney anymore. Just sort of being like now that we have our fandom, we're going back to the real world. Uh, let's see what? how you do there. What? One aspect of Disney we haven't touched is the fact that it's a huge corporation, and you can be one too. An LLC is a great way to organize your personal business. If you're the only owner of an LLC, you will automatically be taxed as a sole proprietor, but you can choose to designate your LLC as an S corporation. Though only available to businesses with less than 100 shareholders, this designation lets all your income be taxed as dividends, which has a lower tax rate for Social Security and <laughs> Medicare. I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> I do have to say, I do try to design a lot of these real-life skills to be almost unanswerable. <laughs> but also very important, especially for self-employed actors and writers uh, and uh, people who might be running their own businesses, perhaps such as yourselves. I'm just going to guess. Yeah. Um. Actually, it's not taxed as dividends. Uh. You know what? Uh, because I think we're all going to be stumped here, and you're pretty close. I'm just going to give you the point for that. Yeah. Uh, so I also have Danny's an LLC, and adult. I'm like, um. Danny's a real adult. <laughs> uh, so uh, the uh, you weren't that wasn't totally correct. Um, it, with an S corp, you uh, not. I said that all your income gets taxed as dividends, but that's not totally true. Yeah. You first have to issue yourself a salary, uh, which gets taxed at the normal rate, but anything beyond your salary will get taxed as dividends. So it's not correct to say that all of your, your income will be taxed that way. Um, but you found the thing pretty quickly, and I think there was a general look of horror on everyone's <laughs> face. Uh, so I think that you're close enough to get that point, and I'm going to allow that. I'll also say, like, your look of horror was totally justified, because I, I spent way longer than I should have trying to craft this question, just being like, do I fully understand what an LLC is? Why does an S-Corp, how do these work together? Why is, and also something that I should probably know, uh, and it just makes my brain immediately shut down. Um, so good job for that i think that makes our final score here six for joan four for danny three for oscar making joan our winner for this episode Yay. very good um I, thank you i so hope I, I hope i pleased you mickey mickey's looking in the magic mirror just like nodding yeah. slowly. <laughs> yes. it's like that'll do joan well thank you all for playing with me this was a lovely game um and thank you for watching join us next time for even more pedantic corrections here on um actually mm -hmm.